Hi folks. So I've had comments from some people who seem to be uh, concerned that you need all the test equipment that I have in order to successfully troubleshoot and repair audio equipment. And you may have heard me say more than once that the multimeter is your workhorse and you do a large amount of troubleshooting with just the meter. And to prove that point, I picked up one of these Harbor Freight 499 meters. You see them in their flyers all the time. And we're gonna see if I can use just this to repair an amplifier at my bench. Now, uh, this is one of the great things about the internet. This belongs to a friend of mine whom I've never met. Um, he's someone who contacted me after seeing the videos and found me on an audio forum. And I've been helping him remotely troubleshoot an Adcom power amp. And he's got one channel up and running. And he sent me this to work on. He, I guess he either didn't want to work on it, didn't want to try it himself, but in any event, um, supposedly it just doesn't put out any audio. I think it turns on, but there's no audio, so we're going to take a look at that. But I'm going to demonstrate that it can be done with just the multimeter. Now, we won't be able to see if there's any aberrations in the, in the output by looking at the sine wave or whatever, but I'm pretty confident we can at least get it up and running. I've downloaded a sine wave generator app onto my tablet. They're free. And the whole point of this is not to try and prove I'm some kind of rock star technician, far from it. It's just to prove that you can successfully troubleshoot a large amount of troubles with just the meter and, um, and a little bit of knowledge. So that's why I've started the basic series to try and transfer some of that knowledge and I'm taking a break from that right now to do this and then we'll get back to those. All kinds of things going on here. Anyhow, let's see what this thing's doing or not doing. Okay, so this is the amplifier. It's a Mitsubishi DA-A10DC, 100 watt per channel power amplifier. and. We're going to take the bottom off and see if there's anything obvious and then we're going to power it up on the dim bulb tester to see what it see what it'll do. Okay, so I've got the cover off and I don't see anything that causes concern. There are no wires flapping in the breeze. Uh, unfortunately, the way the amplifier is constructed, all the components are facing in and I can't see if there's any burned resistors. But I don't see any hot spots or burn spots on the board. And um, I'm going to fire this up on the dim bulb tester so we can see if we have any problems. And that's perfectly normal action, bright, and as capacity is charged, the light dims down. The pilot light on the front is on. I'll just drop the camera so you can see this. And we're going to see what we have going on here. Now there are two protection diodes in this. So we're gonna take a look. I'm sorry, protection relays, not diodes. So I'm gonna see if there's any DC voltage anywhere on any of the relay contacts. So here's our meter. And I have nothing here on the coils. So the coil's not pulled in. I don't seem to have any DC voltage on any of the contacts that would prevent us from having it pulled in. Okay, I don't see anything anywhere here. Which makes me wonder about our meter. So let's take a look at the filter caps because we know from the action of the dim bulb that they should be okay. So if I measure here, good. You can see our meters working. We have negative 46 volts and positive 46 volts. This is a dual mono amplifier. It has two transformers, two capacitors. Each one of these capacitors has three terminals. If you can see down in here, we have one terminal that has our negative supply. We have our ground in the middle. And then we have our positive supply. 
So now what I want to focus on is the power supply that feeds the Protect. So I'm going to turn this off and we're going to take a look at one of the, we're going to take a look at the schematic here. Okay, so here's a blown up section of the Protect circuit. Here's relay A, relay B, our Protect circuitry. And it is getting its power tapped off right here. So we're gonna take a look and see if we have voltage coming in here. We have a 220 half watt resistor in here. I believe that's the symbol that Mitsubishi uses for a fusible resistor. Then we have two diodes in tandem here. Now, I don't know what the advantage is, except that you could use diodes with a lower breakdown voltage if you put them in series like this, or they could have been told, the engineers could have been told, hey, we got a ton of these, use them up, and instead of using other diodes they might have to order, they use these. Uh, I don't know what the reasoning was, those are just some theories. So we should have 36.9 volts here. Now, we have a Zener diode here that goes to ground and our power is coming in from there. So this should be 36.9 volts and we need to take a look and see if we have that there. If we have no power here, this unit will not work. So let's set this off to the side and see if we can find D301. Thing gets heavier every time I move it. Okay, D three O one is right down here. So I'm going to turn this back on and we're going to see if we have any voltage at the cathode of D301. Fortunately, this meter body is entirely made of plastic so we can lay it here. Let me see if I can put this somehow so you can see it and I can see it and still work around this. Okay, that'll work. So I need to look at D3, uh, D301's anode. And I found D301 is right here. And the anode has no voltage on it. So we're gonna to wanna to take a look at R116. That's our 220 ohm half watt fusible resistor. I'm gonna turn the camera off while I search for it. Okay, so I couldn't find R116, but I found D303. So if we have AC voltage, because remember, we're tapping right off of the output of the transformer here. If we have AC voltage at the cathode of D303, then we know that that resistor has to be good. So I have the meter in AC volts. So let's see, D303 cathode. Okay, that gives us about 39 volts AC. So we know we're good up to this point. And yet, when we looked at D301's cathode, we had nothing. And there's basically just a piece of wire here. So we may have a problem with one of these diodes. We need to see if we're getting voltage passed here. We should have DC voltage here, and we don't. Okay, so I've got the power off on this, and uh, this is different than my Fluke. I'm gonna show you what I mean when I say that because I've been using that Fluke for years and I'm really used to it. But we measure a diode with the Harbor Freight Meter. Let me see, can we all see that? Okay. I usually get 0 0.5, 0 0.6 volts with my Fluke. This meter, now look at that, we got 0.63 here. 
and with a different diode let's see okay I'm getting 0.63 volts so now let's check our diodes here we want to see D303 and D302 so I've got the amplifier off we're in diode test mode and uh, let me just put something up here so we can all see what's going on uh, perfect glare oh my god you're not going to get a tilt bail for this kind of money so there that looks acceptable okay so if we look at D303 that looks like a good diode and if we look at D302 that does not that does not look like a good diode so I'm gonna have to see what it's gonna take to get that out because it looks like this whole board has to be lifted up this is not my idea of a good time let's see what it's gonna take okay so I want to unsolder diode D302 if you recall we had voltage at 303 and it tested okay doing the diode test with no power to the amplifier but 302 did not and when I unsoldered the first terminal of 302 it fell off the board because if you look right here it was cracked clean in half so I replaced it and while this diode calls for a 1S2471 uh, I replace it with a 1N4148 uh, it should be fine most of these small signal diodes are replaceable by the 1N4148 so let's turn this thing on and see what we get it clicks out of protection pretty quickly but more importantly it clicks out of protection so what I want to check now is if we have any DC offset so I'm going to put my meter uh, okay this should be two volts and let's see where can I put this so we can both see it how about like that okay so I have one speaker uh, outlet here one speaker so let's see what this looks like I have very little offset so we're going to plug that into a speaker now we take a look at the other one and we also have very little offset okay I'm going to turn this off now and see if I can find some music to put on. Goes up in my brain all of a sudden. I don't look at anything the same way. Gotta build up my thoughts sitting in an ashtray. I'm sorry that I'm so Anyhow, that was the entire problem with this amp. Was this one broken diode in the uh, protect? And we were able to fix this with nothing but this Harbor Freight meter and a little bit of knowledge. We went to the protect section because we had no voltages at all on the output. So we had no offsets and I could have injected signal in and tested it with the AC volts of this meter. But one problem that this meter does have being inexpensive is the lowest AC voltage range is 200. And I'm not sure if we would have actually seen anything or not. However, you can use the AC voltage range on your meter to see if you have music output. Now, it helps have a steady state signal like from a signal generator for a generator app but you can tell using the AC voltage on your meter but we were able to determine the problem with this amplifier using nothing but this meter and that was the only point I wanted to prove now there are things you can't do without the proper test equipment but you can certainly find the problems and at least get the amplifier working 
So anyhow, that's all I'm going to do on this video. Looks like we've got our problem straightened out and I'm going to post this up there. I do believe I'm going to replace the power cord before I return it to uh, the owner. Um, as I said, I got this from a gentleman out in Arizona. Uh, we'll call him Jason because his name is Jason. <laughs> Anyhow, um, I thank you all for watching this. I hope you learned something. And as always, I like giving back to the community that has given me so much. Thanks a lot, folks.